food safety training videos food safety program developed and distributed by food safety solutions safe hands for food handlers the information contained in this video is a guideline only follow on training level 2 welcome everybody my name is sajee alexander Fall on training focuses on the training of employees in food safety practices during the first 6 months of employment. The timing of training will depend on whether they are involved in high risk activities or low risk activity. For employees involved in high risk activities, fall on training should take place shortly after they commence work in a food environment. For employees involved in low risk activities, fall on training should take place within six months after the initial induction. The training outlines will take approximately 45 minutes to one hour. The topics covered in this level are food safety, food safety hazards, physical hazard and how to prevent physical hazard, chemical hazard and how to prevent bacterial hazard, that is types of bacteria, factors affecting growth of bacteria, and controlling of bacterial hazard, cross-contamination and how to avoid cross-contamination, recording of temperatures, HACCP that is hazard analysis critical control points, flow of food, purchasing to serving. Let's start with food safety. What is food safety? Food safety means preparing, cooking, and storing the food in such a way keep free from harmful bacteria or toxins which can make food unsafe to consume. Otherwise, food safety refers to the conditions and practices that preserves the quality of food to prevent contamination and foodborne illness. Next is Food Safety Hazards This session deals with the hazards that put the safety of food at risk. Hazard is a biological chemical or physical agent in or a condition of food with the potential to cause an adverse effect to the health of the consumer. Hazards have the potential to cause harm and unsafe food will cause harm to the consumer. Types of hazards they are physical, chemical and bacterial. Into the food may cause the food to become unsafe for human consumption. Let's start with physical hazard. Physical hazards are some solid pieces of other things that are just not supposed to be in food. Physical objects can come into contact with food and make it unsafe. Metals like nuts, bolts, screws, etc. Glass, plastic, wood, hair, insects. Preventing physical hazard. Do not use staples or paper clips in the kitchen. Keep can openers in good repair. Do not use a glass to scoop ice. Keep food covered. Consider wearing no jewellery or minimal jewellery. Keep hair covered with hairnet or with the chef hands. Next is chemical hazard. Like food is in contact with cleaning agent or pesticides on fruit and vegetables. Let's start with food is in contact with cleaning agent. Chemicals may contaminate food by their accidental addition to food during its storage, transportation or preparation. It may be either through carelessness or lack of knowledge. Chemicals used in food area, example, cleaning agents pose a risk to the safety of food. It is important therefore that they are used correctly.
Next is pesticides on fruit and vegetables. Some food items, example fruits and vegetables, may have been sprayed with pesticide during production. Pesticides are also regarded as chemicals. Preventing chemical hazard. Store cleaners and any other non-food chemicals away from food. Follow directions on cleaners and sanitizers. Keep food covered. Wash fruit and vegetables. Use only food grade containers to store food. Do not use galvanized, that is zinc coated, containers for preparing or storing acidic food like fruit juices, tomatoes or salad dressings. Do not use plastic for microwaving food unless it is made for that use. Next is bacterial hazard. Bacteria are living microorganisms which may be already present in the food when purchased or they may enter that is contaminate food after purchases. Bear in mind most of the microorganisms are harmless and that all food contains microorganisms. Bacteria are living microorganisms. They are so tiny they can be seen only under a microscope. They very rarely change the smell or taste of the food. The majority of food poisoning cases happen due to the presence of harmful bacteria. Bacteria are divided into two types. Infection producing bacteria and toxin producing bacteria infection producing bacteria these bacteria multiply on the food or in the stomach and intestines and damage the lining of the intestine symptoms may include diarrhea nausea fever or abdominal pain Incubation period is longer, from 6 hours to 1 week. Example, Salmonella, Campylobacter and Shigella. Toxin producing bacteria. These bacteria themselves will not make you ill. But rather than the toxin they produce while growing on the food or in your stomach will cause a poisoning or intoxication type of illness. Symptoms may include nausea, vomiting, cramps, weakness, difficulty swallowing and speaking. Incubation period is short of possible few hours. Example, Staphylococcus aureus, Clostridium botulinum. Where are the bacteria? Bacteria can be found everywhere, but especially in soil, air, people's skin and hands, pests, insects and rodents, raw food, on surfaces, equipment or cloths. How bacteria grows? Bacteria needs different conditions to grow and survive. Factors affecting growth of microorganisms are moisture, protein, oxygen, acidity, temperature, moisture. Just like us, bacteria require water to live and grow. Food with high moisture content such as meat, soup, gravy and some milk product can support growth. Food with low moisture content such as flour, 
crackers and hard cheese cannot support bacteria. Protein Food provides nutrients, vitamins and protein to bacteria. Food items high in protein like meat can readily support bacterial growth. Oxygen Most of the bacteria require oxygen to grow. Some may be able to survive without it but will not reproduce. Acidity Most microorganisms prefer food which is slightly acidic or neutral. If food is too acidic or too alkaline, microorganisms cannot grow. Temperature Most bacteria grow best around body temperature but will grow over a wide range of temperatures. 4 degrees Celsius or less bacteria are not killed but it is too cold for them to multiply. At 63 degrees Celsius or above, it is too hot for the bacteria to multiply. Controlling the bacterial hazard The hazards can be controlled by high standard of personal hygiene, good hygiene practices, hygienic handling of food at each stage it goes through, cover food, pest control, hygienic waste disposal, effective cleaning, As a food handler, you have a responsibility to ensure food safety. You will therefore have to control the food safety hazard. Next is cross-contamination. Cross-contamination is a transfer of harmful bacteria from contaminated surfaces of food to other foods. Staffs must ensure that cross-contamination of food item prepared in the kitchen must be avoided at all times. How? Raw food in contact with cooked food, dirty clothes, dirty work surfaces and equipment, dirty chopping board, dirty knives, or unwashed hands. To avoid cross-contamination, you should always keep raw and cooked food separately. Use separate storage areas and preparation surfaces for raw and cooked food. Wash hands after handling raw food. Use separate knives, utensils and equipment for raw and cooked food. Use clean cloth. Use gloves in a hygienic manner. Handle equipment hygienically. Handle food as little as possible. Use utensils to handle food. As a food handler, you have a responsibility to avoid cross-contamination occurring. Next is recording of food temperature. To train all kitchen staff the proper way of recording and using probes and to ensure that food is served and kept at the right temperature. For recording of temperature, a temperature probe is used. How to use a temperature probe? 
Sanitize the probe. Probe food. Know the temperature limits. Sanitize the probe. Record temperature. Most important, alert the supervisor if there is a problem. To ensure food is kept out of the danger zone, the temperature of the food is recorded at various stages. Recording temperature When you record the temperature using the correct procedure, it becomes a written evidence of steps taken to ensure food safety. Complete recording sheets relevant to your areas like record information, date, temperature, and the signature. Thermometer Food thermometer let you check the inside temperature of the food to find out if it is cooked to a safe temperature. Every food handler should have one pocket thermometer at least all the time when he's at work. Thermometers are of three different kinds. Manual or pocket thermometer. Digital thermometer. Infrared thermometer. How to calibrate a thermometer? Calibrate probe thermometers regularly. Do this by filling a container with crushed ice and water and insert the tip of the probe into the center of the liquid, making sure it does not touch the sides or bottom. Wait until the temperature stops changing. It should read 0 degrees Celsius if it does not. Some probe thermometers have a calibration nut under the dial. Turn this nut until it reads 0 degrees Celsius. You can also calibrate using boiling water which has a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Next is HACCP. HACCP is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points. HACCP is a food safety quality assurance system which identifies hazards during food preparation. It examines the flow of food at each step during the preparation of an item from receiving to serving is examined. Hazards are identified and corrective actions or control measures are taken. Those steps where the control measures are critical in making a safe food product are called critical control point. Those establishments using HACCP generally record these critical control points that are temperature. This is known as monitoring. Monitoring helps a premises to produce a safer product and helps protect them from litigation. Has a food flow chart. The first step is purchasing. Then after receiving the deliveries, they go to either vegetable and dry storage area or frozen or chill storage area.
take the case of frozen storage area. The food has to be thawed first, then after preparation and cooking. After cooking, it can be served directly on hot hold it or can be kept for cooling. In case of direct serving, the leftovers has to be disposed. And if the food is hot holded and then directly served, then also the leftovers has to be disposed. The food kept for cooling has to go to chill storage area. In this case, before serving, the food has to be reheated and then served. The deliveries in the vegetable and dry storage can directly follow the procedure from preparation onwards and the same applies for chill storage as well. Go through the links in the chain. Purchasing and Receiving For purchasing, choose your supplier carefully. By choosing a reputable supplier, you are helping to ensure that the food is fresh, of good quality and less likely to be contaminated or temperature abused. While receiving, few things to be careful. Check the temperature of delivered food. They must be the same temperature as your storage temperature. Use only grade A eggs, pasteurized milk products and meat from inspected source. Check cans for dents and packages for leaks and tears. Check expiry or best before dates. Look for signs and ensure that frozen food was and not thawed and refrozen. It means frozen product should be below minus 18 degrees Celsius while receiving it. It has to go straight to the freezer. Otherwise, if it's thawed, can't be refrozen again. Check product for signs of spoilage, insect and dirt. Check meat products for freshness that is bright color, no odor. The second stage of food chain goes to storage. After delivery, the food items must be stored in the right area as soon as possible. Temperature control and the recording of temperature is important at this stage. Frozen food must be stored at minus 18 degrees Celsius. Refrigerators and refrigerator display units must be 4 degrees Celsius or cooler. Dry storage areas should be from 10 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. Store raw and ready to eat or cooked food separately. Never store raw food above ready to eat or cook food. This may cause the dripping from the raw food may contaminate the ready to eat or cook food. Keep food covered all the times. Keep all the foods labeled. Rotate stock. First in first out, new stock should be placed behind or under older stock. Store all food 15 centimeters that is 6 inches of the floor to facilitate cleaning and deter pest. Thawing. 
thawing must not be done at room temperature. If it is, when the center of the food is still frozen, the outside will be in the danger zone and bacterial growth or toxin may be produced. Few ways of thawing are Put the item in the refrigerator on the lower shelf allowing about 10 hours per kilogram. Put the item in a clean, sanitized sink and run cold water over it, allowing about 2 hours per kilogram. Remember to clean and sanitize the sink. Microwave the item on a defrost setting and then cook it immediately afterwards. Cooking should directly be from frozen condition. Whether this can be done safely or not depends on the type and size of the food being cooked. Be sure to use a probe thermometer to check the thickest part reaches at enough temperature level. Preparation Preparation is a dangerous step in the flow of food because the chances of contamination and temperature abuse are greatest. This step involves touching by hands with short intervals and contact with utensils and surfaces. It is also during this step that food is prepared at room temperature and care must be taken to keep food out of the danger zone. While on preparation, wash hands before handling food and after each change of task. Use only clean and sanitized equipment. Do not cross-contaminate. Keep raw meat separate from ready-to-eat food and use separate cutting boards and utensils. Change wiping cloths regularly and launder between uses. Limit the amount of time refrigerated food remains at room temperatures. Work with small batches. Pre-chill ingredients before mixing, that is, sandwiches spreads. Wash fruits and vegetables before use. Do not reuse batters and breading. Next is cooking. Cooking takes food from refrigeration or freezer temperatures up through the danger zone to temperatures where bacteria are killed. The internal cooking temperature to remember for all foods except whole poultry is 75 degrees Celsius. Internal cooking temperature means the temperature inside the food, not the oven, gill or oil temperature. Use a calibrated probe thermometer and insert it into the thickness part of the food away from the bones. Cook stuffing separately, but if you prefer to stuff meat, make sure that the temperature of the stuffing also reaches 75 degrees Celsius or hotter. Cooking should be done in one continuous step with no partial pre-cooking. Avoid overloading ovens, fryers, 
as the heat may not penetrate into the food evenly. While cooking an item with different types of meat mixed together, cook to the highest required temperature. The food premise regulation states minimum internal cooking temperature for some food, that is, for whole poultry, 82 degrees Celsius. For poultry, other than whole, that is pieces and grams, is 74 degrees Celsius. For ground meat, other than poultry, is 71 degrees Celsius. For pork, whole, at 71 degrees Celsius, that is 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And for fish, the minimum internal cooking temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. For convenience and simplicity, a good minimum internal cooking temperature to remember for all foods except whole poultry is 75 degrees Celsius. Next is holding. If food is not going to be served or cooled immediately, it must be kept hot at 63 degrees Celsius or hotter. This temperature will prevent the growth of bacteria. This is typically done in ovens, steam tables, holding pots or chafing pans. While holding, check the temperature of the food regularly with a probe thermometer. Do not use the dial setting on holding pots to measure temperature Use a probe thermometer. Use equipment designed for proper hot holding temperatures. Stir food to distribute heat. Keep food covered. Never use holding equipment to reheat or cook food unless it is designed to do so. Next is cooling. If a cooked food product is not going to be immediately served or processed further, it must be cooled down as quickly as possible. This means that it must pass through the danger zone again. It is during this time that any bacteria which were not killed during cooking or were reintroduced after cooking will have the opportunity to grow. Place large pots of soup gravy etc in a sink of ice water and stir every 15 to 30 minutes transfer food from large containers to shallow pans food depth 5 centimeters that is 2 inches or less to allow for faster cooling ensure that refrigerators are in proper working order and do not overload refrigerators Leave space around foods to allow air to be circulated. Do not line fridge shelves with cardboard or foil as this cuts down air circulation. Next is reheating. The regulation states that all hazardous food items must be reheated to its original cooking temperature within few hours. To be safer, reheat all hazardous food to 75 degrees Celsius that is 165 degree Fahrenheit as quickly as possible. This will be more effective when killing bacteria and preventing their growth. Use proper equipment to reheat. Equipment that reheats the food quickly and to a sufficiently high temperature. Always check the temperature with a probe thermometer. While reheating, the chances are all bacteria may not have been killed during the initial cooking. The food may not have been cooled quickly enough 
or stored at a sufficiently low temperature and bacteria may have grown. Some bacteria may have been reintroduced during storage. Next is Serving Whether the customers are served by servers or they serve themselves, steps must be taken to ensure that the food is not contaminated or temperature abused. Serving staff should not touch the business end of knives, forks and spoons. Handle cups and glasses by the bottoms or handles, not by rims. Use gloves, tongs or utensils to serve food. Self-service or buffet. Provide adequate spoons or tongs to reduce the temptation of the customer using their hands. Protect food with sneeze guards or other shielding in the buffet counter. Not mix the old and the new food items. Ensure proper hot and cold temperature is maintained on the buffet counter. Let us revise what we have learned in today's session. Food safety, food safety hazards, physical hazard and how to prevent physical hazard, chemical hazard and how to prevent bacterial hazard, that is types of bacteria, factors affecting growth of bacteria and controlling of bacterial hazard, cross contamination and how to avoid cross contamination, a recording of temperatures, HACCP, that is hazard analysis critical control points, flow of food, purchasing to serving.